Uh, let's go to this. Let's start with uh, what we know about uh, Mike Pompeo. The more and more we're starting to see here, it is is quite clear that we are headed to a um, a full blown impeachment, possibly not just against the president. They are stonewalling. They are. We now have uh, Pompeo subpoenaed for documents, Giuliani subpoenaed for documents. The failure to provide these documents now, and this is what the difference is with impeachment as opposed to normal proceedings. They have written in the context of this subpoena that failure to produce under these circumstances will be regarded as evidence of obstruction and will constitute obstruction in the context of impeachment they are simply declaring it remember this is not this is a political a political process not a a criminal or judicial one and congress is simply saying if you do not provide us this material it will be a count of obstruction and it will be obstruction. It, it, they could launch impeachment proceedings against Pompeo. They could do it against Bill Barr. And it feels like every day there's more and more evidence to substantiate an impeachment uh, proceedings against both of them. Here's Pompeo two weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago now? Maybe this is, was, it wasn't this Sunday. Oh, yeah, wait, it was this Sunday, wasn't it? I'm sorry. I'm confused because today's Wednesday. Here he is on This Week with Martha Raddatz on Sunday, right? And is this with Martha Raddatz? And here he is. He's completely bewildered about this whole call thing. Did you say call? I want to turn to this whistleblower complaint, Mr. Secretary, the complaint involving the president and a phone call with a foreign leader to the director of national intelligence inspector general. That's where the complaint was launched by the whistleblower. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that President Trump pressed the president of Ukraine eight times to work with Rudy Giuliani to investigate Joe Biden's son. What do you know about those conversations? So you just gave me a report about a IC whistleblower campaign, not, none of which I've seen. Um, I can tell you about this administration's policies with Ukraine. I remember the previous administration was begged, begged by the Ukrainian people to deliver defensive arms so that they could protect themselves from Vladimir Putin and Russia, and they gave them blankets. This administration took seriously the responsibility of the Ukrainian people, we've provided now on multiple occasions resources so that the, the Ukrainians can defend themselves. Uh, we've worked on that. We are, we're working. We'll see President Zelensky this week. We want a good relationship with the Ukrainian let, people. Let me read we something. We want them that to have the, freedom and independence. But, but Martha, you say you know nothing case, about then, this, but let me, let, me, let me ask you this question. The Ukrainian presidential readout of the converse, conversation said they discussed, quote, investigation of corruption cases which inhibited the interaction between Ukraine and the USA. The president tweeted Saturday, it was a perfectly fine and respectful conversation. Do you think it's, quote, perfectly fine to ask a foreign leader to investigate a political opponent? I think I saw a statement from the Ukrainian foreign minister yesterday said there was no pressure applied uh, in the course of the conversation. I, I do think, I do think if Vice President Biden behaved you inappropriately, he if he was protecting his son and intervened with the Ukrainian leadership in a way uh, that was corrupt, I do think we need to get to the bottom of that, Martha and I. I hope that we will. I hope that if uh, Vice President Biden engaged in behavior that was inappropriate, I hope the American people will come to learn that. We've uh, seen America no evidence have, of America that yet, but cannot, let, I want to go back to have the our question. Elections interfered with. America cannot have our elections interfered with. And if, if that's what took place there, if there was that kind of activity engaged in by Vice President Biden, we need to know. There, there's no evidence of that yet, but if the conversation was perfectly fine, as President Trump said, why not release the transcript or a portion to the public? Uh, I'll have, the White House will have to uh, explain. They, okay. They're, they're I mean, I think we've, uh, the, this was, this was, this must've been a week, a week from last Sunday. This is two weeks ago. And, um, there's Mike Pompeo, seemingly no 
awareness of this call whatsoever. He didn't even have time to read the whistleblower complaint. He just heard a report about the whistleblower complaint. He did, though, put a clue in there because it wasn't just about Joe Biden and Hunter Biden's corruption. This phone call was not just about that. Um, we should say and we'll we'll discuss the the. The, the, the lack of corruption that exists there. Um, I mean, at least in terms of Joe Biden's perspective. Um, but they are now pursuing another theory. That is Obamagate or Hillary Gate that the Ukrainians were the ones who actually interfered with the election, but tried to frame the Russians this is the stuff that's going on now in the fevered swamp. This is like gateway pundit stuff. And there's Mike Pompeo trying to push that narrative on ABC television uh, last week. This is what they've been up to, but we'll get back to that. In the meantime, here's Mike Pompeo yesterday in Italy conceding that, well, actually, I was on that phone call. As for was I on the phone call, I was on the phone call. Uh, the phone call was in the context of now, I guess I've been the Secretary of State for uh, coming on a year and a half. Um, I know precisely what the American policy is with respect to Ukraine. It's been remarkably consistent, uh, and we will continue to try to drive those set of outcomes. It's what our team, included, including Ambassador Volker, were focused on, was taking down um, the threat that Russia poses there in Ukraine. It was about helping the Ukrainians to uh, get graft out and corruption outside of their government and to help now this new government in the Ukraine build a successful, thriving economy. It's what the State Department officials okay. that I... So uh, basically that was his way of... I mean, he, listen, he's a, uh, he's a smart guy, went to Harvard, knows how to uh, filibuster, knows how to bury the lead. I was on the phone call, but that because... And then here's a bunch of filler essentially that's basically the the um the story they're going with now i i imagine most people by now know that the hunter biden situation uh the joe biden was over there telling the ukrainians get rid of your prosecutor because the prosecutor was not pursuing corruption and there was a hideous amount of corruption there it also, I think, happens to be the case that Hunter Biden is not exactly a, you know, he's, he's sort of the George Bush of the family. He's a fell son. Can I, right. can I just add, add to this a little bit? I mean, so to be really specific about what you're saying, the reason it is exculpatory, I think there's a broader critique here in two ways. But the reason it's specific, the, the con specific conspiracy theory does not stand is that this energy company is a Russian aligned oligarch who was going to who sort of represented the Russian aligned order. He got Hunter Biden on with the sort of clear desire to win favor with the Obama administration. And what Biden did was basically fire a prosecutor who was aligned with this guy and not call being, for the firing. Right. Call for the firing. So basically, the reason that this specific thread of the story is nonsense is that in that specific action, He's contradicting his son's interest, although, frankly, I mean, it's you know, it's pretty irrelevant. His son makes a payday either way. Right. But the but the conspiracy theory is exactly backwards exactly. because he's going up against what the son is hired to do. However, I mean, it's actually I, a, it's sort of an interesting uh, drama where the dad comes in and the wayward son is there and he tries to undercut the wayward son's interests. On or even level. it doesn't matter. Right. Like, hey, son, you got your payday. We're still going to do this anyways. Right. You know, either way we win. And I would say it's not that serious. You know, I wouldn't take uh, I, I do think, you know, structurally, when the U.S. talks about corruption in other countries, even when they're right. That is a harbinger of our own interests and in energy companies we want to advocate for. So there's a, yeah. a broader critique as well as just even Hunter getting the job to begin with. But that specific conspiracy is contradicted by all evidence of what like happened. Right. The Hunter thing is more of like a generic type of corruption that seems to exist everywhere, whether it's like, um, you know, Chelsea Clinton getting hired by NBC or, or Abby Huntsman, for that matter, 
or, you know, uh, Billy Carter going around and trying to sell off uh, access to... Man, uh, Billy Carter was kind of cool, though. Well, I yeah, like no, Billy I, Carter. I felt bad for him, but, though, because he the, didn't have family sign-off. He's just like, I was just trying to meet with Gaddafi, man. I, Why do you always get all the credit? I don't get the sense that Hunter necessarily has family sign-off, too. I think this guy... You know, they had family sign-off from his brother to... Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. What's that? You don't know that story? Oh, about the... Yeah, no, I don't think you did. <laughs> There's been a lot of things I did without family sign-off, man. Uh, no. <laughs> hey, my brother died. What's up? It's Hunter. But the Trump people... <laughs> the Trump people are always going to be angrier at these coastal elites and this, like, normal corruption and this kind of nepotism that's just accepted as the way of things than they are at Trump's open and yeah. craven corruption and well, crime. Well, I mean, look. Because the, they're like, well, you know, at least he's not pretending that he doesn't have mud on him. Right. But the, the bottom line is, is that this type of corruption exists in every facet of society. I'm not making apologies for it, but I mean, you know, it, you grow up and, uh, you know, we, I, I, I went to go see concerts uh, in high school because my girlfriend's dad was on the Civic Center Commission. You know, it's like I get well, good tickets. Well, this is a little whoa, different. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think you just showed yourself here. <laughs> Might need to take the rest of the week off, Sam. I, I got you. Whoa, deep corruption. But I, I mean, of course this is true. And of course the stakes of uh, the Ukrainian energy business are, you know, deeper than you I just get the sense get that it was like basically Hunter gets the job, pro uh, promises them like, sure. oh yeah, I'll get dad to. <laughs> well, he <laughs> no, did a lot like, of Dad but... shows up and does exactly the opposite. Well, he did a lot. Of, I mean, he also got an mbna lobbying thing right at the same time his dad was pushing through the bankruptcy bill he was on the board of something he was on else the board too. of amtrak yeah of amtrak which is amazing i'm right. a trade expert bro right. <laughs> dude my but, brother's wife's hot i just think that like want to come to an amtrak board there's meeting? My there's brothers away. waywood family members everywhere and some uh are um uh you know incentivized to do this stuff and helped out more than others but uh nevertheless um Meanwhile, as Mike Pompeo heads to Rome, apparently Seb Gorka gets on the plane with him um, because someone has to go. Now, understand, here's the point. One of the reasons why impeachment was so necessary, and which I was saying for months, was that there you, you can't just basically run out the clock and assume that there's just going to be this vacuum that remains there. While all this is going on, it's quite clear the Trump administration, Bill Barr, Mike Pompeo, have been actively involved in trying to not only undercut the Mueller investigation. Remember, the Mueller investigation is over. They are undercutting the entire narrative. They want to be able to come out in the spring of 2020 maybe in the summer of 2020, with a whole narrative that maybe ensnares Joe Biden because he could be the, um, the nominee, that involves the Ukraine actually doing all of the uh, interfering in the 2020 election, I mean, excuse me, the 2016 election, that Russia was not interfering at all with our election. And remember, the Mueller report did say that the Russians interfered in the election. To what extent they Im impacted the outcome, nobody will ever know. But they clearly did interfere in the election. And the same reasons why I don't want us interfering in other elections, I don't want other companies and countries interfering in our election. But the narrative they were going to come out was there was actually Ukraine was actually driven by uh, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. Uh, and they were involved in this interference and they basically framed Russia. Um, and you're starting to see vestiges of this. Apparently, when Trump said, do us a favor, that's what they were looking for. They weren't just looking for this narrative about Biden. They were looking for this broader narrative on how there was this deep state ploy coming out of Ukraine to frame Russia and influence the election and throw it presumably to uh, Hillary Clinton. 
You cannot assume that they're not doing this type of stuff. There's just so much money and political gain to be made from it. They apparently had a video already cut, written, produced for months anticipating impeachment. And they raised like three or four or five million dollars off it in the first day after the impeachment announcement. Fine. They're going to raise money. But this is this is what they're up to. And. Perfect explanation as to why this guy, Seb Gorka, would be on the flight with Mike Pompeo because Seb Gorka is one of those guys whose job it is to build this, basically, this fictional narrative. I worked for him, yes. I was a politically commissioned officer. There that you might go. be the most accurate description the guy's ever used for himself. And uh, here he is, uh, I guess, apparently in Rome. So how interesting. I land in Rome after flying with Mike Pompeo on his Air Force jet, and I find out Twitter has exploded. Why is the left so worried? Well, I think I know. Because the house of cards that is Obamagate is collapsing. The crimes of the last administration are being uncovered, and people are running scared. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy the eternal city. Time for my cafe affogato and my Garibaldi cigar. Ciao. They posted with the latest up-to-date info at setgorka.com. MAGA, my friends. You can't pause it before he does the plug, man. Uh, he rolls. Um, it's, it, this is a huge business for them. It's a huge business. That video got a million views. More. This is a huge business for them. And uh, this is what is, this is what they're up to. There's too many people incentivized to not have this happen, which is why impeachment was so important, which is also why you do not do like a two weeks and out impeachment because then you're basically seeding months for them to dominate. We're going to spend all our time talking about their fictional stories.